so I wanted to tell you what happened from there. He's paralyzed from the upper chest down now. He has movement in his arms, but his hands are like little claws, so if you put them up, they just go like that. So writing or even holding his phone is really hard. So he often thinks that he doesn't want to live that way and says so. I'm sorry for the noise, but this is life here. Traffic, ambulances, people. It's just a part of life. But when he looks at his clawed hands, he says, Mum, I don't want to live like this. And he says to me in a very clear way, Mum, do you understand what I'm saying? And I say, I, I don't want to go there because I believe you're going to walk again. His name's Walker. We named him that after a book in Isaiah. I think chapter 39, it says, those who wait upon the Lord shall rise up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary and they'll walk and not faint. Now the walking and not fainting, that's his namesake. I want him to not give up. And I'm telling myself not to give up. So in a matter of 49 days, from tingling in the calves of his legs and a numbness, he's now has no feeling and he can't even move a toe. And when you stroke him, he doesn't feel it. And they're trying to discover what it is that is eating away at his body and causing this. And they have no diagnosis. They've tried so many MRIs, so many tests, replacing plasma. They've consulted people all over. And frankly, I'm weary as a mother. And he is, as, just as a 36 year old, he says, I'm weary, I want them to find something. I want one good day. So why do I tell you all this? Because I still believe that he has a chance of getting better. Getting better, I'd just be happy with movement. Just somehow a degree of movement. Now, the step that they're going to do is to go into his spinal cord. That's different from a lumbar puncture. He's had several of those. And they're going to extract fluid. The deal is that there may be some permanent damage, but he didn't hesitate, Walker didn't. He said, yes, yes, because what I've got now is nothing compared to what I might be able to have. There is no easy solution. They have to examine the fluid and hopefully they'll find something they've never found before. Something they can attack. So that's the score. And when people say to me, hey Pauline, how is your boy? It's like, well, he's one degree worse today. But I, I want to wake up and feel that it's stopped, that it's burnt itself out, that he doesn't have to have this operation. So. Stan and I are here and our son is having this yet another scan before they do the operation on the spinal cord. So that's it. But I want to go back further. On the 30th of November, my son had his second uh, vaccine, a Pfizer one. And the whole family did because they wanted to see their relatives in Indonesia sometime. But then the borders closed, they couldn't, and they all got the vaccine before this happened. But Walker got breathlessness just within a few hours of having the vaccine. The other two, his wife and son, did not. And that breathlessness kept coming and going for about two to three weeks. But he didn't go and see about it. Because when you're 36 and you think you're fit, it'll just wear off. And then he got fevers, high fevers, that caused pain in his body and almost a sort of a difficulty walking because it was so painful. And when his work said you, everyone has to be tested, he decided to get tested. This, but he wasn't uh, too feverish at the time. But do you know, he was positive. So he had two weeks at home with COVID. And all during this period, after the breathlessness, while he had the fevers, he had little tinglings little signs that things weren't right. But he didn't go and see about it. What he did to help himself was to keep going to the gym. And 
and do more exercise. But actually, my understanding, and it's only mine, is that the, the virus, whatever it was that his body reacted to, went deeper into his system. And every time he did exercise, the immune system was weakening because it was trying to make up for the exercise damage. Till one day after a big workout and after COVID when he felt this will make him feel stronger and healthier because he hadn't felt well for a long time. He started getting the really tingles that wouldn't go away. And within a few hours below his knees, he was numb. And it just took two weeks for that leg not to be able to kick anymore. And now 49 days in hospital later, he's really at a precipice point. And I, I feel quite okay at this point in time. I wanted to talk to you because you pray hard, I pray. pray. Praying is my best thinking. I totally believe in the presence of God, in the presence of the Holy Spirit, but I'm not a believer in magic. I have to tell you that, I'm not. But I believe in miracles and I'm asking for one. So if I don't get one, I'll have to talk to you some more. But I want to say about your prayers how much I value them. And some of you have more powerful praying than I have. I've been in ministry most of my life and I, I won't stop doing that, no matter what happens. I want to say thank you to some people, France Hortel and Amy and Barbara and the Informa team, but most of all to the community of a people to belong to. Because Stan and I, we really believe that without meaningful human connection, where you can be frank and share yourself, share your warts and all, then life doesn't have a lot of meaning. And I believe that's the way the Holy Spirit wants to work, to help people care for each other meaningfully, to give thanks to God for every day, and to get out there and live. Frankly, I'm not living very well right now. But I can't imagine what would it be like if you weren't praying or sending a text. And I don't know what it would be like if I didn't feel intense love for my family and with my family. So there it is, it's a long story. Now, I haven't said much about the medical team. Don't get me wrong, they are terrific. They wring their hands, they're trying everything. They've spared no expense. They've taken on board lots of suggestions. Some of them have been yours, areas of research, consulting people. This is like their last ditch effort, but they'll maybe think of something else. And my son is totally committed he, with them you'll take a risk. I'm not sure about how you're living just now, but your life, it's really worth risking things for. Risking reputation, risking what you believe. I sense so many people don't ever want to make any waves in life and kind of agree when they're with whoever. Your life's worth risking. So, wherever you are, whoever you are, I think um, it's valid for me to say I send my love. I really believe in that. And I'm hoping you send me some hope. And maybe I can send you some. All right, do your best today. Maybe share this with people who know Walker Henry Stewart. But Stan and I, we send it. You're the very best. Take care of yourselves. It's the 6th of June in 2022. It's going to be a good year. Bye for now.